and it's just basketball. At the end of the day, it's just basketball. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe on the way in the door, my people. I hope you all are having a truly, truly fantastic day today. Uh, so it's about time we get to these super thanks from last week. And uh, like always, the title of the video comes from a question in the super thanks. Shout out to Snug Chamberlain uh, for always coming with some great questions. Uh, but without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this. Uh, first up, shout out to at the real Siberius with the five dollar super thanks, and he says uh, this era is too soft for rivalries or for players to play through any type of mild discomfort. Only nineteen players played eighty two games this season. Pathetic. Great content as always. Keep it up, and that comes from my will there ever be a flu game. Like Michael Jordan's in today's NBA. And yeah, absolutely right. Uh, I think the era is too soft. I mean, he, he pretty much said it all. The era is too soft. Uh, <laughs> most of these, uh, like I said, to me, this era, they are really looking for any and every excuse not to play. They're trying to make the most money while playing the least. So, yeah, absolutely right. Any kind of mild discomfort, these players are looking to sit it out. These players are looking to duck the smoke. And, you know, it is what it is. So hopefully that we're on a way to a, a different era in the NBA with some of these young stars coming up, hopefully. Or they may just get corrupted by, you know, like we've seen many players get corrupted <laughs> over the last decade or more. But anyway, shout out to At The Real Siberia. So thank you so much for the $5 super thanks. Cannot thank you enough. Uh, next up, shout out to uh, At QQ810, as always, coming through with the $10 super thanks. And he simply says thanks. And that's coming from the Baron Davis. Completely destroys JJ Reddick for disrespecting Players of Past Eras video. Uh, again, shout out to uh, QQ810. Thank you so much for your continued support from week to week. I greatly, truly appreciate it. And next up, uh, shout out to at Fade680 with the $5 super thanks. Uh, it's coming from the same video about Baron Davis. Destroying J.J. Reddick for his ridiculous takes on players of past eras. He says some were plumbers and some took additional jobs to support their families because the NBA wasn't profitable back then. J.J. is being disingenuous by implying that past era play NBA players lack skill. Many players from the golden era averaged 20 to 30 points per game, while J.J. never averaged 20 points in a season. If they were plumbers then he would be a janitor. Facts, facts, and facts. Again, you know, to, to me it's just, you know, I, I'm sorry. I, I have to put all this on the LeBron James era to me because this is when this kind of stuff really just became prominent. And we all know uh, J.J. Reddick is a LeBron apologist. And normally people like that are apologists because they know that they didn't do what they could have in their own career. You know, I've always said, uh, you know, where I'm from, uh, college football is big here. And, you know, uh, growing up in the city, it's been different opportunities. You know, the college players are like celebrities here. And it's been many different opportunities where I've come in contact with some of the players from the team. And I've always said this. It is always the bench warmers that have the attitudes. <laughs> you know, it is always the bench warmers. Like, I've almost gotten into it with players who are sitting on the bench. The guys who are starting are always cool. <laughs> it is always the players who are doing less that feel the need to stick their chests out. And so, yeah, to me, J.J. Reddick falls under that category as someone who, you know, uh didn't reach nowhere near the level of the players he's trying to tear down of the past. And again, you know, just being honest, you know, first of all, anything 
And it doesn't matter what it is. Again, it, any job that you can think of that has a beginning, which everything starts somewhere, it is natural that over the years, things are going to be added to it. But again, the thing that never uh, loses its place is the fundamentals of whatever it is. Again, it, is, it can be music. Uh, it can be construction. It can be computer programming. It can be anything. But the fundamentals always remain. And when you start to lose those, just because you're able to do some fancy tricks doesn't mean that uh, that's going to work on people who are fundamentally sound, which we know the, the, t the players of today's era are not that. They are not fundamentally sound. So, you know, you, a lot of these players that they try to make fun of, that they try to make fun of for um, supposedly having less skill. I mean, these players are fundamentally sound. And like I said, to me, most of these players of the past that these players try to disrespect, they would come in today's league and still destroy. Number one, because they have the work ethic. You talk about them being plumbers and having jobs. Okay, what if they didn't have to have a job because they were making enough money that they literally could spend all their time actually just playing basketball and working on that game? And the difference is, is they would be working on that game with a different mentality. They would be coming from the Larry Bird mentality, from the players before Larry Bird. Again, Jerry West. You know, it doesn't matter who, who you're talking about. These players understood stood what hard work is. I mean, just imagine uh, having to have a, another job while playing in the NBA. Again, the, the amount of discipline that that takes to, to not only discipline, but just passion for the game. You have to actually want to do that uh, to stick it out even though you have work in a day job. So, yeah, for players like J.J. Redick and these modern players, it's like uh, if it was up to them, if these were the players of the past, basketball would have died <laughs> because they don't have the work ethic to do that. So, yeah, I say any of these players in the past that they make fun of, they could come in today's modern, uh, modern day era and wreck shop, period. Uh, but anyway, shout out to at Fade 680 Thank you so, so much for the $5 super thanks. You are greatly appreciated. Next up, shout out to at Swan Daily with the $2 super thanks. This is coming from LeBron James capping again, says Kyrie Irving is the most gifted player. He says, now you mentioned Shaq. I thought I'd recommend his Shaq documentary on HBO. It's another great source of content for you. Interesting, interestingly, he admitted that he was just an unathletic tall guy before high school. Do you believe that story? It surprised me because I always viewed Shaq as a natural, naturally talented athlete, especially when he focused on so many different other, especially when he focused on so many different other things other than basketball during his career. Uh, you know what? Um, uh, it, it sounds hard to believe that he wasn't always athletic, but I guess, you know, if you think about it, a lot of your growth spurt and changes happen in high school. So he absolutely could have been, you know, a clumsy, unathletic guy and, and went through, you know, some sort of change in high school that improved that kind of like Michael Jordan have. What did he grow like five inches from his uh, sophomore to junior year or something like that? So, yeah, you know, I, I guess it, it sounds hard to believe because when I think of Shaq and his size, I think of one of the most athletic players to, to be Shaq's size. Again, Shaq didn't have bad handles. Shaq could get up and down the floor very well for a guy that big, you know. So it sounds hard to believe, but I, I can kind of believe it, like I said, just because I feel like we, a lot of times, People in general go through major changes in high school, uh, whether it's height, you know, uh, whether it's, you know, athleticism. So I think that can happen. But I, I like to check out that documentary you're talking about. So I will put that on my list and uh, hopefully get to it, you know, in the next few weeks, next month or two. Uh, so much going on. But anyway, thank you so much for the two dollar super thanks. You will greatly appreciate it.
Uh, next up, shout out to at Wizman Ballin 8498 with the $5 super thanks. This is coming from LeBron James destroyed his legacy when he went to Miami. He says, say it again, you see, when you change players out like dirty underwear, you have to start the building process over. That proves LeBron James always wanted the easy route, not climbing the mountain. Whoever fails to see this are born cheaters in life. Shout out to at Wizman Ballin 8498. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, and, and yeah, I agree. I absolutely agree. It's like the more you research LeBron, is you know, you really start to see that he only wants to take shortcuts. Like he he actually has no interest at all in building something. And the ironic thing is, he wants people to recognize his greatness. Well, again, uh, legacies are built. You know, it, it, well, let, let's let's put it this way. I guess it depends on what you build your legacy out of. If you build your legacy on hard work and on struggle and on overcome, overcoming people, you will have a highly respected legacy. But when you build your legacy out of paper mache, out of popsicle sticks, <laughs> you know, uh, out of taking as many shortcuts as possible, well, don't expect the respect of a Michael Jordan, of a Larry Bird, of a Magic Johnson, of a Kareem, of a Russell, of really any other player that you can name. Because again, like I've said, LeBron James is the most inconsistent superstar that we've ever, ever had. And like I said, the more you dig into LeBron James, it really becomes apparent that he has no interest in building. I mean, again, he left Spolstra after winning two championships. Yet you want to come, you know, you want to complain about the players you haven't had. You want to complain about the coaches you haven't had. But in reality, you have had great players and great coaches, and you still leave. Meaning, you are only interested in and what can win you a championship this year. And to do that, that means you do have to stack the deck. Because uh, newsflash fanboys, <laughs> your king is just not, a he's not nowhere near as great as they have made him out to be. Let's just go ahead and say this. LeBron James is not anywhere as near as great as they have made him out to be. He's not as great of a, of a basketball player himself, and he's not a great leader. And this IQ that they keep on talking about is highly overhyped. Matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and say this. LeBron James just does not seem like he has a high IQ at all if you listen to him talk. <laughs> I'm sorry, fanboys. This is who you chose to support, you know. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> shout out to Ed Wizman Ballin. 8498. Thanks so much for the uh, five dollar super thanks. Next up, uh, shout out to at QQ810 again with the ten dollar super thanks. And this is coming from the LeBron James destroyed his legacy when he went to Miami uh, video. Uh, and all he says is thanks. And again, you are greatly appreciated uh, for your continued support of the channel and greatly appreciated that you continue supporting from week to week. Like I said, I truly cannot thank you enough. And last but not least, shout out to at Snug Chamberlain 99, 86 with the $2 super thanks. This is coming from LeBron James. Capping again, saying Kyrie Irving is the most gifted player ever. Um, and he says, thanks, amazing, amazing job as always. Keep the facts coming. I've got three points I'd like to ask you about and get your opinion about. Number one, in 1996, we all know MJ had to battle the pesky Seattle Supersonics, which MJ and the Bulls closed out on Father's Day of that year. George Carl and a Ford named Frank Burkowski who Dennis Rodman antagonized the whole series. Series Both said Den Rodman flopped all through that series. And my question is, do you think Rodman flopped all through that series? And if so, do you think it was necessary to get the job done 
because we all know it's not basketball and not respected. So how does that tie into LeBron James and how is it different from LeBron James when he flops on a regular basis and in playoffs? Basically, do we hold Rodman to the same standard about flopping? Uh, so let me go ahead and say this. Uh, number one, I would say no. I do not hold Rodman to the same standard, for, first of all. Uh, and why is that? Because LeBron James supposedly is in the GOAT argument. That LeBron James supposedly is no, lo no lower than number two on the rankings, according to mainstream media. Uh, LeBron James is probably in most people's top five. He's on a lot of people's uh, Mount Rushmore, even though he shouldn't be. So I feel like, no, when, when you're supposed to be that kind of caliber of player, you are supposed to, supposed to, <laughs> keyword, supposed to, get held to a higher standard. But we know LeBron James spends all his time trying to lower the standard and, the, and his media friends spend all their time pushing narratives to lower the standard. So no, to me, I do not hold Rodman to the same standard as LeBron James. Again, Rodman is not calling himself the GOAT. Uh, there is nobody who's going to put Rodman in the GOAT conversation. Rodman was a great rebounder, a great defender, a, a, a superb role player. Uh, now, on to the flopping thing. Uh, now, people can correct me if I'm wrong, but, you know, when I talk, when I think of LeBron James flopping, I think of uh, not getting touched and making it seem as if as if you got touch, not not just got touch, making it seem as if someone uh, took a bat <laughs> on the court and hit you so hard that you uh, flew twenty feet across the floor. That, when I think of LeBron James, that's what I think about his flopping. Now Rodman, I don't know if I've seen a clip of Rodman not actually getting contact. I think Rodman seriously exaggerated a lot of his fouls. But I haven't seen a clip of Rodman actually not getting touched and trying to draw a foul. You know, uh, to me, there was always contact. Now, how much contact? Again, I think we all know Rodman sold those fouls <laughs> in dramatic fashion. But again, to me, there is a difference between selling a foul and trying to... Uh, Convince the refs you got fouled when you absolutely didn't, when you didn't even get touched. So yeah, I you know I, I think both of those things. I, I don't think they flop on the same level, so to speak. Uh, what I would classify Rodman as someone who sells the foul. Like I said, he might do it in dramatic fashion, but LeBron James is literally not getting touched. And flopping. To me, that's a different thing. And again, for someone who's supposed to be in the GOAT conversation, no. To me, that that alone not only kills the GOAT conversation, but for me, flopping knocks you out of the top five immediately. When you're trying to uh, convince the refs you were fouled when you didn't get touched, I mean, I, I think so low of you for that move. I, I just think it's... Like, it, it's, it's unbecoming of a so-called competitor, you know. But anyway, let's get to the next question. Said so number two, obviously MJ had a sick dunk and layup package that's untouchable, unmatched, not even Kyrie Irving's uh, layup package, and he has got some nice. He has got some nice. My question is, do you think MJ and Vince Carter hold the title of dunking over or on straight seven footers. Uh, Vince Carter actually jumped clean over a seven footer in the Olympics. Uh, Vince Carter philosophy most of the time was get in the air and figure the rest out later. That's why I think his dunks and and oops were so special. Just was basically poetry in motion, gliding through the air. Who do you think? Uh, looks the best and is the best at dunking over seven footers. Wow. Uh, good question. Now, I'm probably going to have a controversial 
take on this because a lot of people uh, really love Vince Carter and a lot of people give Vince Carter a whole lot of problems. And I, I love Vince Carter. Don't get me wrong. I love Vince Carter. I think he has... I think he is a more explosive dunker than Michael Jordan. But to me, I'm a ha I always have to give it to Michael Jordan just because Vince Carter may actually have the, if you're, we're talking about the best single dunk over a seven footer, you know, he, he may have the best on that. But if we're talking about overall, Michael Jordan has so many, so many to count. And so many iconic ones. Again, it's the one on, you know, Merrill Tur Mer Mel Turpin with the Utah Jazz where he had dunked on, what, Stockton and a fan and uh, antagonized him saying dunk on someone your own size and he comes right back down the court and dunks on a seven-footer. You know, it's the the one with the Knicks where they got him trapped on the baseline. I can't with somebody in Charles Oakley and he, you know, fakes one way, spins back towards the baseline, rises up, and dunks on Patrick Ewing with not much space to get up. And he gets way up and dunks on Patrick Ewing. I mean, there is the one, I can't remember what it, I can't remember if it was an Olympic game. No, I think it was some kind of special game. But it's the only video of Michael Jordan shattering a glass, shattering the backboard. And Michael Jordan pretty much jumped over uh, a seven-footer then to execute that dunk. So... You know, I think overall, I have to give it to Michael Jordan just for the sheer volume of dunks and posterizations that he has. I don't think Vince Carter could compare. But if I was going to give a single for one single dunk, I would have to give that one to Vince Carter. Like I said, I think Vince Carter is an explosive dunker. Uh, Michael Jordan was more finesse. Uh, but like I said, just the sheer volume, uh, just the sheer... Uh, how Michael Jordan made the game look, you know, his, his dunks were as beautiful as his game, and they were very um, uh, signature to Michael Jordan. You know, you you still don't see people uh, dunking like Michael Jordan. You know, it's just very specific to him. But anyway, he says. Lastly, I would like to get your opinion on this Anthony Edwards and Cameron Beef, who used to rap with the Jewel Santana and Jim Jones. It started from Anthony Edwards' latest Adidas commercial, where a guy was reading off some receipts, and on those receipts were messages from certain figures making statements about Anthony Edwards' seemingly constructive criticism until he got to Cameron's comments where he said Edwards wasn't a superstar yet, but he likes uh, his game. Edwards responded by saying F Buddy and Cameron uh, responded to Edwards with a decent freestyle where he was putting some bars together on the Black Rob like Woe Beat, R.I.P. to Black Rob. This is not looking like something Jordan or Kobe would do. So do you think this comparison is effectively over? And Ben Over, frankly, what do you think of this situation? If you heard anything about it, and do you think Anthony Edwards should just focus on his game and getting better, making his teammates better instead of potential feud with a rapper? What do you think? Uh, actually, no, I hadn't heard of the whole uh, beef between Anthony Edwards and Cameron. Uh, I'm a fan of Cameron. I, I was a fan of the the whole group back in the day i can't even remember what was the name of the group that they called it uh but anyway uh yeah you know it, i i think the comparison for anthony edwards and and jordan and kobe that they've really been over and to be and so let me be fair to anthony edwards he has never compared himself to joe jordan and kobe so let's get that that out there you know this is all media driven and, you know, my responses are based on what the media was saying about this guy. Uh, you know, I was hopeful just because, you know, some of the interviews I've said or post interviews, he seemed to say the right thing. But I've also seen him say the wrong thing as well. But here's the thing. When you're talking about Michael Jordan and Kobe, again, this is why I, I, the question is, is how much can you develop? A certain amount of competitiveness and I, I really think a lot of it is cultivated 
during the years that you're growing up, you know, during the the uh, grade school years. I think a lot, and, and part of it is just your personality. But outside of that, Anthony Edwards is 22. Uh, how he performed against the Mavericks, you would never see that from MJ. Like, again, MJ is on 10 all the time. Like, Kobe is on 10 all the time. Now, Kobe came in from high school, and he came into a situation where he had to earn his place, so his trajectory in his career was different than, than Mike's. But Michael Jordan, he, he's just a player that's on 10 all the time, and, you know, these peop these players who are getting into beefs, whether it's with... Uh, um, what am I trying to say? Whether it's with people from the crowd or, you know, or rappers or whoever it is, the thing about Michael Jordan and Kobe is they were going to make you pay on the court. Every time. That they're, they're going to make you pay on the court. You know, it's like... <laughs> so, to me, the, the, the getting back in... Matter of fact, I feel like a, a lot of times, you know... When it came to MJ, he wouldn't even address a lot of things. <laughs> you know, matter of fact, he he would act oblivious to <laughs> he would act like he was ignorant of a situation if someone said something about him, or he would act like it wasn't that big a deal. But then once he got on the court, <laughs> he would destroy this person. And so again, like players like MJ and Kobe, it's like we don't have to talk back and forth with you in public. Like, when we get on the court, you know, if it's a fan, then we're going to destroy your team. If it's another player, we're going to destroy you. You know, if it's a celebrity like Spike Lee, it's like, we're going to destroy your team. But that is how they got their revenge. You know, that that is how they... And so, yeah, you know, I think Anthony Edwards uh, does a little bit too much talking when he hadn't... He hadn't worked on his game enough to know that he could always back it up. That's the difference between Michael Jordan and Kobe. If, if Michael Jordan talks, he knows that he can always back it up. And it's not he doesn't know it just out of sheer cockiness. It's not about him, uh, you know, just thinking he's the best. Like, a, what, what, do, what do these people like to say today? Uh, manifesting he's the best. It, it, you know, it's... I know I'm the best because I know I've put in the work to be the best. I know that in practice, I play like it's the finals every day. And so I'm always on. Like, again, I don't have to get ready. I'm always ready. I outwork everybody in the league. That's why I know I'm the best. Not just because I'm just saying it. So, you know, players like Anthony Edwards. And honestly, again, it's most of the players in the league. It's, 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 this is the culture of today's basketball that we live in. It is most of the players in the league that they have this um, they have this attitude that just because they say they have confidence means they have confidence. But no, to me, real confidence comes from something. It doesn't come just from you saying it. Real confidence comes from a tangible element. And normally that tangible element is like, I know I've put in the work to so that I, I know what my skills are. Like, I, I know my skills are better than yours because I'm always working on it. And so, yeah, I, I think, and you know, I don't think Anthony Edwards is going to be in the Kobe and Jordan realm at all, you know. Uh, eh, it, it's hard to say right now, but, you know, whether he gets in the top 20 of players, top 30, you know, I, I just don't see, I, I don't see him um, reaching any, I, I, I don't think Anthony Edwards will ever be in the GOAT conversation. Let, let's put it that way. And it's, it's early to tell, again, you know, th this is just kind of my opinion based on now, but things could change. Who knows? Next year, he could come back much stronger, and, and he may prove a lot of people wrong and show that he's been working on his game. And But, like I said, um, you know, um, I, I definitely think the comparisons to Mike and Kobe uh, should have never happened. And, yeah, he, he's not on that level. But anyway, 
Shout out to at Snug Chamberlain 9986. Thank you so much for the $2 super thanks. Thank you so much for the continued support. Thank each and every one of you who continue to support this channel. All of you are greatly appreciated. And like I said, uh, please continue to support all the channels that are giving you honest takes about basketball that are truly giving you their honest opinion uh about basketball uh shout out to at sports and fitness rants uh angry old hoops retro heat check michael jordan fans are the best hey i always forget this guy but he has great content too d allen ricks tv uh who else uh the, the list goes on and on uh uncut hoops um but yeah shout out to all of these guys who got 23 NMB Sports? Um, like I said, go support all of these channels. Uh, when you click on the videos, hit the like button, because uh, I always do. The moment I cl click on any of these guys' video, the first thing I do is hit that like button. Uh, but anyway, thank you all so much. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments about any of the topics we talked about today. You all have a truly, truly fantastic day, and I'll see you next time. All right.